Hi, my name is Andrew. I'm an engineer here at Haas Automation. And this video is all about our next generation Haas control. It works a lot like the previous control, but with better graphics and navigation. No matter what your experience level, this video will show you everything you need to start making chips. So let's get started. So like we said, the new control is a lot like the Haas control you already know. The edit button still takes you to edit, the memory button still takes you to memory, MDI and handle jog all work the same. The big improvement is how you navigate inside each of those modes. Now we use tabs to organize into menus and submenus, just like your computer has folders and subfolders. So for example, let's press settings. So we see the tabs at the top of the page. I can use the right and left arrow keys to hop around these tabs. Then I can use the down arrow key to move to the bottom row of tabs. Now you may notice there's a new navigation icon next to a line of text. This caret or triangle means that we can press the right arrow key to get to the options for this entry. We also have some new buttons to talk about. Now you can navigate backwards and forwards through our page history just like we would in a web browser. You can find these buttons where send and receive used to be. Now let's talk about loading programs. Loading programs on the new control is easier than it's ever been. You'll notice we've organized it to use files and folders just like your desktop PC. Now I happen to have a program on my flash drive that I want to load. So let's put it on. So after I put the USB key in, I'm gonna press list program, then use the arrow keys to cursor over to my USB tab. Again, using the arrow keys, I find the file that I wanna copy and hit F2, just like I did in the previous control. Now this brings up that familiar menu, asking me where I wanna copy it to. We can see we have that new little carrot thing again. So I'm gonna use the right arrow to enter memory, to copy, follow the on-screen instruction, press enter. So let's say I had more than one file on my drive that I wanted to load at the same time. You can cursor over the files and press enter to mark them. We get a little check mark next to it indicating it's selected and you can select as many as you want at any given time. And then just like before, we press F2. We see our little carrot right here next to memory. We're gonna use the right arrow key and press enter. Now as a side note, if you ever get lost, all of our keystrokes are listed on the right side of the screen. So to prove we've done this correctly, let's navigate over to the memory section. And there we see our programs, ready to go. So let's go set our offsets. The offsets page works just like before. All of our tool, coordinate, probing, and pcool information gets stored there. So let's go set some offsets. We're gonna press handle jog, and jog the machine close to our part, and we can see the offsets page is active and that the offsets page is organized into tool and work offsets tabs. This makes it easy to keep track of which mode I'm in. So we found the edge of our part. Now let's go into our work offsets tab and set our part zero. So we'll use our navigation keys to tab over to the work offset. And we're gonna highlight the axes that we wanna set. So let's set our X. We just press part zero set. We're done. Once we find our Y, we do the same thing. We just highlight it and press part zero set. And we're done. Very simple. The Tool Offsets tab works the same way. We can navigate to our Tool tab, select the tool we want to set, 
and press tool offset measure. Now as a helpful hint, we can toggle between windows like this up at the top by pressing F4. This saves us a lot of menuing when we're setting our offsets. So we're all set. We got our program loaded, we got our offsets dialed in, and we're ready to roll. But we need to be in memory mode to run a program, and we're not in memory mode. So press the memory button, and we can tell that the pane on the left here is active because it turns white. And we're ready to go. We just hit cycle start. Easy. OK, so we're done with that program. Now let's say we wanted to run a different one. We're going to press list program, find the program we want to run, then press select program to make it active. Very simple. So we've run our program, and now let's say we want to make a change or an edit. Let's see how that's done. I'm going to press the edit button, which takes us into our editor. We can see the header at the top of the screen very clear. We know which mode we're in. Now I can add, change, or delete code just like before. For example, let's put an M0 before our tool change. That way, the machine stops and waits for us to press cycle start before continuing. So I'm going to type in T2 and then down arrow to search for it in the text. And I'm going to put an M0 right above it. So I'm going to move the cursor around to the end of block line and type M0 and then press enter. So we see there's the end of our previous toolpath, there's an M0 and then our next tool. Now when we make the change, you see that our file name turns red. That means it has not been saved. To save it, we have to press the memory button. And there's our M0. And when we're doing our edits here, remember, you can press F1 to bring up the same familiar options, like cut, copy, find, and replace. These options get used all the time when creating and editing programs. And we wanted to make sure they were just as easy to use as ever. So. We've done some navigation, we've loaded programs, set offsets, run programs, and even done some basic edits. And it was super easy. If you've ever used a Haas before, the new control should feel very familiar to you. We think you'll appreciate the streamlined interface and powerful new features. Thank you for watching this introduction to the next generation Haas control. Be sure to check out the Haas Do-It-Yourself site at DIY dot